Death Valley days. Washington Territory in 1853 was a land of few people and many hardships. A social event such as a wedding was something to look forward to, and folks would travel miles just to take part in the function. Such an occasion brought together a lovely young lady and a complete stranger, and started the unique courtship of Carrie Huntington. <laughs> You're more than two hours late, Jim. Here. Here. The stage to Rainier. I'm afraid it's gone, Miss. I held up as long as I could, but... But I've simply got to get to Rainier today. Well, that's impossible. There won't be another stage out of here till tomorrow at noon. My sister's getting married in just a few hours, or, or maybe even less. Well, I can't help you none then, miss, so will you please let me get back to my work? Now, look, before I went away to school in Olympia, I promised I would be back in time for this wedding, no matter what happened or who tried to stand in my way. Well, maybe there's a way. Come on. You're hauling that freight to Mount Rainier, ain't you, Henry? I intend to. But don't get hung up here with a lot of unnecessary small talk. His name is Henry Windsor, ma'am. And he's got a heart as big as Mount Rainier. Mr. Windsor, my name is Carrie Huntington, and I've simply got to get to Rainier as soon as possible. I get paid for hauling freight, ma'am, not people. Henry, this is an emergency. Maybe you can bend them rules a little this time. I've waited so long for this day, and now... <laughs> It'll take me about 20 minutes to finish loading the wagon. If you're ready by then, all right. If you're not... I will be ready, Mr. Windsor, I will be. It'll take me five minutes to change my dress. <laughs> you waiting, and I am sorry, but I won't have time to change my dress in Rainier. There you go, miss. Good luck. Thank you. I think I'll need it. me from being my sister's bridesmaid. First, the horse threw a shoe. Then I missed the stage. I rode the last five miles in a wagon. But it was worth it. Every single solitary bump was worth it to get here on time. Well, you see, dear, Reverend Kingsley came all the way from Portland, and he's very busy, you know. He has several other ceremonies to perform, and... I know, and I've kept him waiting. Well, let's get on with it. Where is everybody? That's what I was trying to tell you, dear. You see... Oh, that's Mr. Windsor. He was good enough to drive me after I missed the stage. What happened? Carrie. Daddy, I told you I'd make it on time. <laughs> yes. Uh, well, you see, dear, uh, Reverend Kingsley... Oh, I know. Mother's told me all about Reverend Kingsley. Now, will somebody please tell me what has happened? Well, uh... Well, you didn't show up in time. Well, how were we to know you would uh, be here at all today? You can't mean... Yes. I missed the wedding? Judith took your place. I missed the wedding? Please, Carrie, contain yourself, dear. I missed the wedding! I missed the wedding! 
him. Well, you're here now. That's important. Oh, and important. you don't know what I went through to get here, and you didn't even wait for me. Why, why, I'm not even a part of this family oh, anymore. Oh, you'll always be a part no, of this family. No, not after what happened today. My only sister gets married, and I miss the ceremony. And it's, it's, it's done. It's, it's over with forever. And, and I miss seeing it. Oh! Here. Here. Oh! Wait, you can still be part of the wedding. In fact, after all, you've been through the main part. Remember how we used to play at getting married? We'd act out the entire ceremony like it was real. You mean we could do that here? Why not? You're dressed for the part, and, and Mr. Windsor can stand beside you as though it were a real wedding. If, if that's what Miss Carrie wants, I'd be glad to. No, oh, it's good to see my girl smile again. <laughs> well, dear, you'd better bring in Reverend Kingsley while she is still smiling. Oh, yes. <laughs> uh, sorry to interrupt, Reverend Kingsley, but your presence is urgently needed in here. Reverend, this is my other daughter. Miss Carey, I presume. How do you do? She's, uh, very upset about missing the ceremony, and it would cheer no end if you ran through it again. Oh, you're asking me to perform the ceremony for Miss Carey, and, uh, this young man? Uh, Windsor, sir. Henry Windsor. Yes. Very well. Join hands. Henry Windsor, wilt thou take this woman for thy wedded wife? Yes, sir. I'd be proud to. Harry Huntington, wilt thou take this man for thy wedded husband? Oh, I will. I will. I now pronounce you man and wife. <laughs> Congratulations. Two daughters married the same day. Thank you. Everything has turned out splendidly now. Yes, it sure has. But of course, uh, only one of my daughters was really married. I performed the ceremony, sir, for both daughters. But Carrie's is only just in fun. When I perform a ceremony, sir, it is never in fun. I administered a solemn and sacred oath in the presence of man and God. And I assure you, sir, that the contract entered into between these two young people is binding, both spiritually and legally. It has to be. Must I remind you, sir, that the welfare, nay, the very survival of our pioneer country depends upon the conscientious manner in which all of us discharge our spiritual as well as our legal obligations? Do you mean that I'm married, really married, to him? Those whom God hath joined together this day let no man put asunder. Oh. Oh. I'll be certain legal formalities, papers to be signed, and then I'll see to it that the marriage is dissolved. Without further embarrassment to you, well, I'd, I'd rather not, sir. What do you mean? Well, if you don't mind, sir, I'd like to stay married to your daughter. Well, I do mind. Abandon my daughter to a perfect stranger, not on your life. Oh, that bellow of yours has made you a rich man, Tom, but we've got something a lot more important at stake here than the price of apples. Well, a fine friend of the family you are. You sound as if you're on the side of this mad man. No, I don't think he's mad, Tom. Love, maybe. Least ways he thinks he is, and that's why he deserves a chance. A chance to do what? To come courting. I'd like Miss Carrie to... I'd like my wife to know how I really feel about her. What's on your mind, boy? Well, my folks have a, a little farm not more than a six-hour ride from here. If my wife would visit them, I could... come around in the evenings and do my courting there. No! Oh, I could vouch for his folks, Miss Carey. They're honest and God-fearing. You'd be just as safe with them as you are right here. And if Carey turns him down and he signs the papers, we'll be rid of him once and for all? 
That's the bargain. All right. You have one week to win her over. Well, I'll need more time. One week. Take it or leave it. I'll take it. Oh, I won't go with him. I'll never be his wife, never. Mother, Mother, I wrote to you about the Major. Well, he's about to propose, and, and Philip, his father's the senator, and he's getting very serious. You, you can't expect me to just, just run off with, with, with him. Oh, come on and cheer up, Miss Carey. After all, this is your wedding day. My wedding day? Oh, my wedding day! <laughs> Mr. Windsor, you are making a grave mistake in wanting me for your wife. Can't you see that? No, ma'am. Do you know what I learned at school in Olympia? How to be the wife of a rich and influential man. Now, how to be the, the hostess for all the dinner parties he'd give for his friends and his business associates. I can't sew. I can't cook. I'm not interested in raising a family. You and I are complete strangers. One week is going to make no difference at all. Uh, the part about us being strangers, that isn't true. I never saw you before in my life. About eight years ago, when I joined the militia, they, they sent me to Olympia. I didn't live in Olympia eight years ago. Well, there was a, a store there on, on Main Street where they sold those oil paintings. Still there. And they had a portrait of a girl that I've never been able to forget. And you look just like her. Even that white hat you were wearing. That hat I, I bought for the wedding, that was just a coincidence. The girl in that picture Look so real that, that I swear she talked to me. Oh, I was just a another scared kid at that time and and lonesome. But the girl in that picture gave me hope that, that maybe I was gonna do all right. There's another world besides the the barracks and the farm, she seemed to say to me. With you as my wife, I could find that world. I, I could do anything. Oh, please try and see me like I really am. Don't you ever touch me again and I'll never be your wife, never. Well, I still got a week to change your mind. Better be going. Don't be afraid. They're in a squally. Peaceful as they come. Look strong. Your squaw? My squaw. You sell? Trade, maybe? Uh, no. No, uh, we have five children. All grow straight, strong. Yes, uh, they will be a great comfort to me in my old age. You come. We're not going anywhere with you. You come.
still. Is something wrong? Medicine man say evil spirit in him. An evil spirit in this tiny dear thing? Mother die at birth. Father of infant. My son. Killed when he hunt game. Now, women not come near. Afraid of evil spirit. Infant grow sick. Die, maybe. There's nothing we can do to help you. White squaw make infant grow strong. Tall. Like own sons. You've got to let us go now. Or your whole tribe will be punished. But the baby might die if we go. And if we stay, we'll die. I've been around Indians all my life. I know what he's got on his mind. Why would they harm us for trying to help the chief's grandson? That old fox is not interested in that baby. He's trying to save his own skin. The Nisqually believe that the evil spirit in that sick baby will go into the body of the last person that took care of it. If we stay and the baby dies, they'll stone us to death instead of the chief. If we stay? Do you think he brought us here to give us a choice? No. You stay. You not be afraid. I help you go back to your people. You're willing to risk your neck to see we get away? Why? Hm. Once Nisqually, great warrior, hunter. Now they live like coyote, chief to blame. I see. You want to be chief because you think you can do a better job. And if we stay, there's just a chance that the baby might live. Night falls soon. Then you go. We've got a choice now. We'd better take it. I can't leave. You can't leave? Just walk away and let this baby die? I'd never forgive myself. I'd never forget it. Do you understand what you're saying? As long as there's a breath in this baby's body, there's a chance we can save him. And that's all I understand. All right. You, I hope, go. You figure if I leave, she'll come chasing after me. And then you won't have to worry about the baby because you know he'll die. If she stays, I stay with her. And that's the end of it. My wife knows how to make powerful medicine. She will banish the evil spirit so that it never again will harm the Nisqually. But she must have more time. White squaw medicine harm Nisqually. We've always been friends of the Nisqually. White man take Nisqually land. Kill game. The enemy. I have a feeling he'd give us more time if it wasn't for you. White man Nisqually enemy. I'm asking you in a nice way, keep your mouth shut. You silence me, white man, or I kill! White man strong, much courage, win time for squaw. Baby, dear little baby, you can have all the love you want. All you have to do is reach out for it. Don't you know that? Babies laugh, they cry. Why don't you? You never make a sound. Never. No 
matter what happens, I love you. I want you to know that. Now, let me finish. Now, it's got nothing to do with a lonesome boy falling in love with the portrait of a pretty girl. I love you. For what you really are. Am I making any sense at all? Evil one here yet. No! Hear that? There's nothing wrong with a baby that can holler like that. Listen to that beautiful sound. The evil spirit is gone. My wife has worked powerful medicine. There's nothing wrong with your grandson. Love and care are good medicine that will protect him from evil spirits. Don't you understand that? Love is good medicine. I understand. Well, which way are we going? Rainier, your week is up, Mr. Windsor. I love you. Doesn't that mean anything? You promised you'd take me home. I promised. Get up. <gasps> well, you kept your end of the bargain, Windsor. I'm grateful to you. Goodbye and good luck. Wait a minute. I didn't bring Mr. Windsor home for you to say goodbye to him. I thought I wanted to be the, the grand lady of the manor, rich man's wife, famous hostess. But I know it's not true. I have to be needed, really needed. The way Henry Windsor needs me. If Henry Windsor courted me for a whole year, he could never prove himself to be more devoted or strong or loving. And as for you, it's about time you learned I'm not a portrait to be stared at. I'm a woman. And I happen to be your wife. A marriage by mistake that could have only happened in pioneer days. How do you think it turned out? On June 3rd, 1903, Henry and Carrie Windsor celebrated their 50th wedding anniversary. And Carrie at last had the opportunity to play hostess to her children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren. Next week, another true drama from our American past. See you then.